The following interview was conducted with Bob DeMoss for the Purdue University uh, Library's Oral History Program. It took place on November 14, 2007 and Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Library. Welcome. Thank nice you. Nice to have you Good here. Good to be here. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about where you were born in your early years and your parents and siblings. Well, I was born in a little town, a little river town called Dayton, Kentucky. And they, everybody wants to know where that is. I say, well, Cincinnati, Ohio is a suburb of Dayton, Kentucky. <laughs> so we're the <laughs> most northern tip of the state of Kentucky, really. Okay. And okay. Uh, had a, had a, grew up in a, in a nice, you know, neighborhood, small town, nice high school. We had a lot of fun. What was the size of the community in the high school? That you it was to? nine nine thousand five hundred, and it still is. Wow! <laughs> it can't go anywhere because it's surrounded by by other towns and, and the river on the north and Fort Thomas on the on the south and Bellevue on the east and it's right another there. town on the west. So. Okay. Did um, did you have any siblings, brothers, or sisters? Had a, had an older brother, Jack, uh -huh. and he was still living. He's ninety three. And I had a, a, a brother, Baird, who passed away. Oh, okay. Tell us a bit about high school. What sort of things did you participate in high school, and how large? Well, we were in a small school, so uh, and the whole area had small schools, so we participated in everything, played, including you know, athletics. Of course, played uh, played football in the fall. We played basketball in the winter time. We played baseball and track in the spring, and uh, there wasn't anything else to play. <laughs> so, but uh, then we. Uh, Spent all of our summers on the river in canoes. Oh, did did you work during the summer at all, or just did you when you could? Yes, when we were young, we worked on the, on a, on a new football field that they put in there, uh -huh. and uh, then got odd jobs in in Cincinnati. Okay, when that, when they were available. Yeah, probably. How close to Cincinnati are you? Um, oh, right you across say? the river. Bus right number across. twelve takes eight minutes. <laughs> Well, that is close. Well, yes. Then you, that's where the airport is, though, is it not? The airport, uh, uh, is Lonkin is right across from Dayton. Okay. Uh, at the the uh, east end of Dayton, but oh, uh, the old airport, the yeah. new airport, Greater Cincinnati Airport's out in Kentucky, out in Florence. Oh, I see. That's okay. about twenty miles away. Okay. okay. Then I'll talk about uh, where did you do your come to college and tell us a little bit about your life as a college student. Well, I uh, I you know didn't plan on going to college and uh, all of a sudden somebody our school was a good basketball school and we didn't did do pretty that well, well and we did very well we went to my fi my sophomore year we went to the semifinals in the state tournament in my junior year we went to the final game of the state tournament and my senior year we were ranked number one in the state when the season ended and uh, we just we we played football to get ready for basketball really and uh, I thought I was coming here to play basketball, but Cecil Isbell recruited me, who was a Purdue coach at that time. Sure. And my brother says, I think you got to go track in the Big Ten. That's the best league there is. I had a chance to go to Kentucky and play basketball. Uh -huh. So I, I came here and uh, never left. That's, um, what, what, what's the course of study? Tell, when did you uh, get your degree? And tell us about campus life when you were here as a student. Well, I graduated in 1950 in the School of Forestry. Uh, I should have gotten out in 49, but I was three hours short. And, uh, and you know, I started out in engineering. I wanted to be an engineer. Well, I found out that engineering wasn't for me. And so then I uh, went into uh, School of Physical Education. Then I transferred into forestry, which I like the outdoors, and sure. and it was uh, it was a good a good course of study, good overall education. Right. And uh, so, played football my freshman year. I was a starting quarterback. Was because that, they didn't have anybody else probably. Was that uh, the time when they all had a varsity? Because at one time wasn't there just a freshman team, or was it? There were no. They were they were looking for bodies at that time. Oh, okay. It was right at the end of the war. Sure. And uh, it was a it was the fall of 1945, and. Uh, so um, we had a lot of guys that were in the V-12 on the team, a lot of Navy guys, a lot of Marine guys, a lot of guys just came back from the service, got discharged, and I was a freshman. I got a very, very good education, very early, really. And uh, so they got you a job in the fraternity house in the kitchen, and you lived there and sure. went to school and, and, pra and pra start practicing football. I left. Um, after the Indiana Kentucky All Star basketball game, I left Indianapolis and came right here. So I was in school the next week. Oh my goodness! So 
my head was spinning, let's put it that way. <laughs> Did you live in a dorm the first year? Or, no, they huh? took you and, and uh, they, they had a deal, the athletic department had a deal with fraternities and they took you and they, they put you in a fraternity house say, you know, would you take this guy, he's a, you know, so on and so forth, and then you worked in the kitchen for your meals, so, okay. room well, and board, so that, that cut down on expenses for the athletic department, and it made it nice for all of us, and okay. I had an opportunity to go to the Sigma Chi house, which was a lot of great guys, and we had a lot of fun. Sure. Well, then you played, what was your position that you played on, and how were some of the games when, how, what was the season going during that time? Well, when, when I was a freshman, we uh, started out and won our first five games. In the fifth game, we beat the number one team in the nation, which was Ohio State. Oh, wow. And uh, on that team was a guy named Dick Fisher, who was a, a running back, blocking back, and an All-American named Paul Seringhouse, who about three years before that, I was idolizing, pretending like I was them in the street. And here I am, we are going into Columbus, Ohio, and we're playing this team. And those guys are on the other team, and I'm kind of awestruck. Sure. And they had 83,000 people there that day, and uh, there are not that many people in northern Kentucky, so <laughs> it was kind of different. And we beat them 35-13, so it was a uh, wonderful, wonderful memory. Yeah, I would say so. Okay. But we got beat the next week by Northwestern. That was bad. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> then uh, you stayed on, and so um, you stayed on. Then afterwards, you I had a the very brief career in pro football. Okay. Uh, there was a team, after you graduated. A team called the New York Bulldogs. It's now it after they trans, you know, move around a lot. They're now the, they're now the Indianapolis Colts. As a matter of fact, that that franchise wound up being there. And uh, the thing I didn't know is they had uh, they had two All American quarterbacks one named Bobby Lane, one named Johnny Roush. They had no con no cut contracts. I didn't know that, but they said they don't give no cut contracts. So I was the odd man out, and I came home to watch a football game, the Marquette game, in 1949, and went in the locker room to see my teammates and coaches after the game, and Stu said, Stu Holcomb, the head coach, says, uh, I want you back here in, in February. I want you to coach your quarterbacks next year. I said, Okay, I said I'm available. Just tell me when to be here. Sure. So that's so, well, tell how it happened. Yeah. You know, tell us, assistant coach, what was you know, some of your responsibilities, and also what was Ross Aid like? That uh, structure was the original. Or, the original Ross Aid, I think. When uh, you were as an assistant. Well, you know the gold band, the gold band in the stadium. Now they got the, the black band, a gold band, black band. The gold band was the original stadium. Wow. The gold band of seats. And it was about 22,000, something wow. like that. But that was, you know, a big crowd to me, though. <laughs> right. Not as big as Ohio State, though. <laughs> or the big house of Michigan, either. <laughs> That's right. We went up there, too, and played. <laughs> what were some of the other things you did as the assistant? Were you involved in recruiting or just working with the We were always involved in recruiting. Mm -hmm. I was, I was uh, the quarterback coach. Stu said, I have four freshman quarterbacks, and I want you to coach them next year. I said, OK. And I didn't even know what I was going to make, but it didn't make any difference. Sure. So, uh, and then we had, and, and then they were, you know, then we're all close friends to this day. There was four quarterbacks and myself, so. That's nice. Were kind of you fun. married at that time? When you came, yes, uh, I where'd was. Where'd you meet your wife here? Or um, my you? wife and I started in kindergarten together. Wonderful. We started going together sophomores in high school. And we've been married a long time. We decided. <laughs> that's wonderful. We got married in 1949. Yeah, that's wonderful. Do you have some children too? Yes. Uh huh. Grandchildren. Two Purdue graduates. Two Purdue graduates. One Miami of Ohio graduate. Okay. Oh, that sounds good. Then you became. I'll tell us a little about the some things I'd like you to talk about for when you were head coach from 70 to 72. How did how did you become the head coach? For our researchers, some of the things that I ask, I keep in mind for the people who are going to be using it for researching university. Well, I was I was an assistant to Jack for quite a while, and uh, and 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 coached the quarterbacks, and and was the so-called offensive coordinator, and uh, Jack was basically a defensive guy, and uh, so uh, I just I just worked with the offense all the time, and uh, and we had some, and we had some good success. And we also had some nice players to, to coach also. Mm -hmm. And we had a good run of quarterbacks and 
and a lot of them are in the Hall of Fame right now. Len right. Dawson's in the Hall of Fame. Sure. And Dale Samuels was a great quarterback, and then came along Len Dawson, and then came along you know Ron DeGravio and Gary Danielson, and mm -hmm. so we had a we had a good a good run of, of quarterbacks in there. Did I know I've left somebody out, but no, I didn't. I have a to. couple. Of, um, <laughs> did you? Um, Molenkoff was the coach. Was he the coach after when you first came? Or no, was Stu Holcomb was the head coach oh, when I first oh, joined the staff. Oh, I see. Jack was an assistant, and I was an assistant. Oh, okay. But then uh, you took over as the head coach. Who? Somebody had retired, or Jack you? retired. Yes. Okay. Jack retired, and then, then I became head coach for three years. Okay. Now, one of the couple. We'll talk a little about the quarterbacks. One of them, of course, was Mike Phipps, and he's the one that beat. Uh, Notre Dame. Never lost to Notre Dame. And then you Bob mentioned Bob Greasy never lost to Michigan, and I never lost to Ohio State. You got to get your own little club there going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how? Tell us a little bit about recruiting. How? How? How's that changed over time? Oh, it's changed. It's it's people. There, there were no rules recruiting back then. You, you know, uh, uh, some you kids would show up, and alum would bring some kids in. There weren't there weren't any uh, there weren't any number restrictions you could take as many as you could afford and uh, is there a number now you can only yes have there's only a certain amount of number you, there's only a certain amount you can have on scholarship I see there's only a certain amount you can sign so to speak but you never knew whether you had a recruit until they showed up on campus hmm. I can remember going to getting in a car leaving the practice field driving to Cincinnati and they said we think Roger Stahlbach is going to go to go to the academy. So I got in the car after practice and went down. I said, "I want him to tell me to my face." He was a class. He's to this day he's a class person, and, mm -hmm. but he was coming here. So, but, but then he, he did, went to the Naval he Academy. He had, yeah, yeah. had a great career. a great pro career. <laughs> um, well, you talk. Motivation. It's it's hard to keep the players and the losses and wins. Any uh, comments on that to keep their spirits up and even for the coaches. Too, well, it's you hard. just no, yeah. you just you, you just you know go go in there every day and you say we got another game and and it's, it's like another season. You just go play. Right. And uh, that's what the game is all about. Sure. It's it's done between the lines and and you have to prepare for it. You have to have a good attitude to prepare for it. And uh, and football's not one of those games where you can just go out there and run around and not get knocked down. It's it's uh, it's a physical. Practices are, are tough. Yeah. And uh, but it's 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 hard sometimes. And and when you come close and get beat, it's it's even tougher. Yeah. It, which it's happened before. Right. Yeah. Leadership, of course, is one of the things that you excel. Any comments on leadership or working with the players and the students? No, you just use common sense and be honest with them. And you know, when they do something wrong, you try to correct it. When right. you when they do something well, you pat them on the back. Right. There's no no, no magic to it. Yeah. And it takes it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of work. Sure. One thing on the recruiting uh, back in the earlier days, there wasn't any of the draft. People didn't come. How did the people get drafted? Then the players. What, did you mean? Get, how did they come to? Yes. Come, come to Purdue University. Uh, well, not no. Uh, if, if they were, if the pros were coming to. Well, you got to, drafted. Oh, okay. Yes, I was drafted, and okay. And in did they would just make the contact? I was drafted. They had the nice thing about it. Then there were two leagues. And they were in competition with each other, okay. so that kind of made it made it nice. Sure. And I was drafted by a team called the New York Bulldogs, mm -hmm. but and that team had just moved there, and uh, and I think they came from from Texas, moved up to uh, New York, and because Ted Collins owned them, he was Kate Smith's manager, the right. great singer, right. and. Uh, but it was it was not a great organization, and the New York Yankees were in that same town. The New York Giants were in the same town, so there were three professional football teams in New York City, and uh, that's a lot. But I, you know, I uh, we had we had uh, we had two other good quarterbacks, and I was the odd man out after four after five games. Uh -huh. I had a five game career. Let's put okay. it that way. Okay, that sounds right. Let's talk about some of the players. One of the ones was Otis Armstrong. He's the Big Ten all-time leading rusher. 
doesn't he? Yeah, yes. He was one of the number people. 24. Yeah, right. And runner-up in the Big Ten for total offense. And Otis is what? Where is he today? Otis is in Chicago. Okay. He's yes. not, he, did he go to the pro? Yeah, oh, yeah. yes, he did. No, uh, I'll tell you what. No, oh. Otis is in Denver, Colorado. Okay. That's where that's where Otis played for the Denver Broncos. Okay. And he is in business out there and done very, very, very well good. for a kid from the south side of Chicago. Very good. How long did and, he play? And his running mate was Daryl Stingley, who had that unfortunate I was going to ask you, yeah, Daryl, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, they it, were they on the same team? Oh, no, here they were. But they were here on the same team. But not in the pros, though. No, was, no. He was in Chicago, I think, wasn't it, if I can't remember uh, that? I forget now, but he was oh, when he was, was injured. Oh, was Daryl playing for when he got hit by, well, oh, gosh. That, 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 oh, oh he, was, he was with New England. Oh, okay, okay. And now Leroy Keyes, of course, he was the... Um, 1967 race is a runner-up for the Heisman. Right. Yeah. Right. That must have been a tough, tough yes, thing. Yes. Hard. Finished third, which is. Yeah, but he was he 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 played behind. He was he was runner-up to a good player. O.J. Simpson was sure. a was a good player. Southern Cal was a good football team. They uh, and and a former teammate of mine was the head coach at Southern Cal. Okay. John McKay. He was a teammate here with Hank Stram. Oh, okay. So. Uh, uh, it was uh, it was interesting, and and OJ was a uh, was a good back, a very very good college back. But he had good coaching staff, and he had a good line in front of him, and uh, and and he he had some great games. He deserved it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There weren't uh, in those days there weren't as many bowls as there are now. Were there? Oh no! And the and the of course it's a Big Ten, but it's really the Big Eleven, Big Twelve, whatever. But uh, what was the bowl. Or tell us a little bit about after the season would well, be they, over. Well, they what the, and what, how we, that what we had in the conference was in the Big Ten uh, they, they they said when football season's over, it's over. There were, we were not we're not going to get into bowl games. And then along came the Rose Bowl pack, and uh, it started in nineteen the the nineteen forty eight team nineteen forty nine, and we signed a a deal that the Big Ten team would only go to one bowl game. The Rose Bowl, that was in the contract. So we, the, the, the champion, okay. went to the Rose Bowl every year from the Big Ten. From the Big Ten, and played a West Coast team. That was the pack, and uh, and that shut everybody else out. Said we would go to no other bowl games, and finally, you know, it got to the point where it was hurting you in recruiting. And because all these other schools were coming, say, hey, look, come, come come to our school because we can go to four or five bowl games if we want to, four or five different bowl games. So finally we got that straightened out and yeah. now it's it's open for it's open for yeah it's open it's fair game for everyone. Right. When you were the uh, a coach any um, what were some of the real challenges and re any responsibilities tell us a little bit about some of that when you're taking over. Well, you know, when you were an assistant coach, the, taking yourself out of, off the field in everyday practice was uh, was the biggest adjustment I had to make, because you know you you t you turned your your responsibilities over to someone else, and staying out of their way was the biggest thing, and uh, trying to get on go watch both sides of the ball and stand up on the tower watching defensive practice and offensive practice. And uh, it was kind of boring up there, really. And uh, want to be down where the action but it was, is. But it was. But that's the way it was done then. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody didn't do it that way. But that's the way Jack did it, and Stu did it, and so I followed followed them and sure. and, and, and used their pattern. So it was. But it was enjoyable. We had some. We had some good players, and but we also played a lot of good teams, and that makes a big difference sometimes. And play them in close games, but unfortunately, some of them came out the wrong way. It's always that challenge. Yes. What, what was uh, the? Um, where was the team practicing for the people on? Uh, they're going to be reading the cat. The practice field is not where it is today. Where, where the? Uh, where it's where the Molenkoff Center is. Is that where the practice? Well, our practice field is where Mackey Arena is. Oh, okay. Mackey our Mackey practice Arena. field. Then we moved it out north. To we moved it, built Mackey Arena, and moved sure. it further north. 
and uh, where the Molenkoff building is now, and there's a little there's a practice field next to it. That's correct. Right. But uh, our, our original practice fields were where the where the Mackey Arena is. So next right to now. Lambert. That's Fieldhouse. where they were when I played. Yeah. Right next to Lambert Fieldhouse. Right. We'd walk out of Lambert across a little parking lot. That little parking lot still there, and then we'd walk onto the practice field. Yeah. Okay. Right on Northwestern Avenue. Yeah, very handy. <laughs> um, how about some recollections of some of your outstanding games? Uh, I'll try a try on that. One of the ones that you, uh, something I did read, did say that the IUPU bucket game of 72 was the most satisfying win of my career. That has to be the understatement of the year. <laughs> well, that's a rivalry, isn't it? It's a rivalry, yes. And, and, uh, and we had lost some tough games down there. And uh, so, and it was my last game as head coach. And uh, nobody else knew that but me. And I didn't say anything to anybody about it. But uh, that was a that was a fun a fun game for our kids and a fun game for me. Yeah. Any other? Uh, how about the? What do you think about our rivals with Notre Dame and, and IU? There are big challenges. They've been long-time play uh, rivals. With well, them. the nice they, thing about the, the 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 nice thing about the Notre Dame game, there was a movement on at one time by I won't mention who started it or whatever. That the Big Ten should not play Notre Dame. Let's just shut them out. And Red Mackey was our athletic director. He was a good friend of Moose Krause, their athletic director at Notre Dame. And he said, I'm going to play them because they're friends. And he said, we're going to play Notre Dame. And but the rest of them tried to shut them out. And they did for a long time. Hmm. Nobody played them. But we played them every year. And uh, it's it goes a, way back in time. It's a long standing it contract. To, well, we started playing them. And we started playing them in 1946. And we played them every year since 1946. Right, right. And uh, we took our our whippings. Believe me, they hit in 46, 47, 48. They were national champions two out of three years. <laughs> I got knocked down by some great players. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, that's not too bad. <laughs> and the athletic director at that then at that time was George King, wasn't it? Around in the 70s, after. Oh yes, yeah, uh -huh. yes, yes. George was there in the 70s. Right. Yes. What? Uh, prompted you to step aside from that uh, the coaching well you know I was I was just you know it was it was time I just I just felt it was time for someone else to take over mm -hmm. and because uh, I'd been there for 23 years coaching coaching from 1950 through 1972 and uh, and I just felt it was time to to, to, to move on to something else sure and then you got now then assistant athletic director tell us a little bit about what uh, your responsibilities and the opportunities? Well, I was responsible for basically all the game management of, of which, basketball, which and and whenever we had a a conference, a, a Big Ten conference meet of some kind here, whether it be tennis, track, whatever, I was in charge of that, and I was in charge of the non-revenue, so-called non-revenue sport uh, budgets, and all, all the other sports except football or basketball. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that kept me busy. Then when they brought the women into the picture, sure. then he said, uh, he said, now I want you to take over the women's games too till we get this thing settled. I said, uh, am I going to get any more money? And he said, no. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, I thought I'd try. <laughs> right. uh, the John Purdue Club, that was, uh, you tell us a little bit about that. Uh, you're in touch base with them, I'm sure. That's well, been I around can, a long time. Cordy Hall was his idea. Of, he was in the alumni office and to, to start a club to, uh, to, to get donors to back, to back the athletic department. And we had to get, we didn't want to get crossways with the Purdue Alumni Association. And it was a, a separate entity all to its own, and uh, just to help defray the cost of scholarships. And that's where the money goes, the money goes to scholarships. Mm -hmm. And now I think it, it, at one time it was paying, it, it was taking care of a lot of our scholarship mo uh, monies. And for all sports. Which, which, for all sports, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when you were the assistant and the director, were you involved at all with any of the bowl planning at all? or when, when Yes. The, when the uh -huh. That must take a lot of planning. Well, not so much. Oh. You just, you just uh, the, the, the people, the 
organizers uh, do a good job. The they, ones that they are sponsoring. Take care of it. They take care of basically all the stuff. The main thing is the toughest thing is who goes and who doesn't go. Because not all the players. In the official party. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> you know, but do, at all, that point. do all the players get to go? We, we wanted, they, we wanted all the players to go, yes. Sure. But sometimes uh, it wasn't in the budget from the bowl people for that to happen. So we defrayed the cost and took care of it ourselves. We wanted them all to go. When we went to the Rose Bowl in 67, we brought the rest of the squad out there two days before the game. So we felt that they were important to our team. All right. Tell us a little bit about the, the Rose Bowl, uh, some rem reminiscences oh, of that. Oh, my. That was, that was a merry-go-round. I mean, th there wasn't, you didn't have enough time to get ready for the, for the game. We spent all of our time going to these events and dinners and luncheons and parades and and and, and Big time. we didn't well we didn't have a meeting room we we uh, you know you're out of your element so to speak and you're how did you go did you go okay. by train out there or did no you fly? we no we flew out oh, okay and but but you're in a hotel and you try to have you have staff meetings in someone's room you don't have a staff meeting room you don't have black. You know, you don't have the, the the necessary things you need to get ready for a game for your practice schedules. Our poor secretary, she went with us, and she's typing, you know, with a typewriter on her bed and all that kind of stuff. And and it's just it, it's roughing it. Yes, it's a diff, it's a different uh, situation, but but it was fun. We had yeah. a good time. Yeah, that was the first bowl that Purdue had gone to. And we yes, that's the first bowl we'd gone to, and we wanted to make sure that the players had a chance to enjoy themselves so we didn't want to we didn't want to put them in a put them in jail so to speak right we wanted to give them some freedom to enjoy themselves until two days before the game then it was okay this is all business now did they do any practice before that or not? oh yes oh, oh yes, okay. but yes. Up, we practiced here and we practiced out there okay but we we had to get on a bus and and go about 20 miles and and it'd take you, you know, it, not like being home. It's not like that. And uh, and we practice on a baseball field. It wasn't a football field. Uh, no, we were in a park. We were in a city park. They found a city park and lined out some <laughs> a football field for us, and that was it. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. And we were playing Southern Cal, and they stayed home and used their facilities. <laughs> so they were in their element. But uh, it was fun. It was fun, and, and the head coach was a former teammate of mine, John yeah. McKay. Yeah. How do the how, how do you contrast with some of the later bowls that Purdue has gone? It's a little bit more organized, or what do you think? Well, I haven't been involved in okay. it, so I just you, you know. Still go I, to oh them? yes, it's. I think it's a lot more sophisticated now than it was at that time. But you still, you still, you know, fill a lot of trucks up and move a lot of stuff to get it down there, wherever you're going. That's right. Especially if you go to Texas somewhere. That's a long trip. <laughs> right. Uh, the 1975 uh, then became the uh, ninth member of the Big Ten to approve the conference for people going to the Bulls. And uh, how about the North-South Classic? Uh, you were involved in that at one time. Do they still have that anymore? The North-South North -South Shrine game? Yeah. I, don't, I, don't think they, I don't think they do. What did that? It happen? used to be Christmas night. I okay. played in the North South Shrine game on Christmas night. Okay. And uh, we had a we had a lot of fun, and uh, they did it right. And then uh, I had an opportunity to coach in it also, the the uh, North South Shrine game. And uh, what was the composition of the of the teams or the people that played on that? Well, th there was a most of them were from uh, from uh, northern uh, schools north of the Mason Dixon line so to speak and the other teams were from from the from south, south of that. SEC, different schools Atlantic Coast Conference Texas and those kind of places and uh, but uh, it was it was a lot of fun met a lot of nice a lot of good uh, kids not kids they were men that we coached and mm -hmm. uh, so it was a lot of fun we were down in Montgomery Alabama and that was that was different sure and uh, the thing that you don't have you don't have the practice facilities that you do when you're at home. Yeah, and did they have? Do people locally come to them? What was the attendance? How did the? Oh, they, well, they were attended fairly well. Were they? Yes, uh -huh. they were. They were. But probably now the bulls. The, the, the town had to do the job, and and it was kind of tough for for your people to get to a game on Christmas night. 
you know. <laughs> I, I, unless it's, but, you know, we're uh, all going, right? The Liberty Bowl, they did a wonderful job. And, and uh, when we went to Memphis, they did a nice job. That was an easy trip. That was kind of close to home for everybody. Sure. They right. could drive down. Right. And, uh, but, you know, when you go down and play in Texas, and that's a tough, you know, long, long trip. All right. But uh, they're, they're, it's, it's really a reward for the players. All right. It really is, and it and, should be. Right, and they really work to earn it. And now it's, there, as I said earlier, there are just so many of the, uh, so many bowls, many more than there ever used to be, yeah, which the gives big, them more opportunity. Right, and the Big Ten, at one time, at one time we could have gone to ten straight bowl games when we couldn't go to a game, a bowl game at all, unless you went to the Rose Bowl. Wow. We could have gone to ten. We had a record, good enough, to go to make to, it eligible to go to. From nineteen, uh, from nineteen sixty, all the way through nineteen nineteen, uh, well nineteen fifty eight, fifty seven, we could have gone to bowl games, but we had to tie in with the Rose Bowl, one team only. Period. Yeah, right. Okay. <clears throat> How about Chauncey Village? How has that changed during the time that you've been here uh, as a student and also on staff? Chauncey Village. How's that changed? You mean the village here? Uh huh. I don't. It hasn't changed that much. You think it's I pretty much think. the same since the I don't 50s. think so. About the oh, same. Cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. It's really changed. Automobiles. Well, parking is a real problem. Well, that's right. It wasn't a problem back then. There weren't that many cars. Okay. And people, when I was in school, there weren't that many. You know, you walked everywhere you went. And the campus has changed a lot too. It's it, but the core campus, the core sure. of the campus hasn't. But we've expanded and and needed to. Right. The biggest uh, thing that uh, was from 1945, when I came here as a freshman, there right. were 3,000 students here. The next year, 1946, when the, when the war was over, we had 16,000 students. Wow. They were living anywhere they could find a closet. <laughs> and I mean, we had, uh, in our fraternity house, we had maybe 15 pledges and 10 actives. The next year, we had about 60-some people, and we're trying to find places for them to sleep. What was how, then what was housing like for the students? Well, they, 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 well it was, the, the housing was built for 3,000 students. Now you go to 16,000. Now you're putting up temporary housing, which is what they did. They had to do. They're dragging in stuff here, and where was and, some of and you're doubling up in your fraternity houses and and and, and the residence halls. You're stuffing them in any any nook and cranny you could find. Where was some of the temporary housing put up? And it doesn't exist anymore. Out by the airport. Hmm. Married student housing was all out there. Okay. Those were all married students out there. Okay. And then they had was... fields of them out there. My Lord, and that must have been the time they put up trailer the parks. They had, they had trailer parks around here that 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 that, uh, that stu married students lived in. Students lived in. Oh wow! It was you know you just figure that influx of people coming in, and uh, was the varsity apartments was that here at that time? Yes, they've always been here. Okay. They've been here. That's since about the, the oldest one I think here. Yeah, that was probably the only one here. Right. What about living in, weren't there apartments in the houses? There were more houses close to campus at that time, or am I mistaken? No, they, that, they all kind of turned into apartments. Okay. They all kind of turned into apartments. As we expanded the city, they, as the city started moving out toward Lindbergh Road and across sure. Lindbergh Road and then across the bypass, right. uh, you know, it's, 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 it's different. What was the levee like when you were in the 50s? Non-existent. Ex explain that non-existent. Well, it was a cornfield, right? Well, the the, the foot of State Street. Uh, the house I lived. The house I lived. Uh, the foot of State Street. There was uh, two gas stations. That was it. And Bruno's came in there. Whenever Bruno came in, that was he came in in the. I, I'm trying to think of what year he did come in down there, but they were. They've been a little a, over uh, fifty years. Down that there. was an auto body shop down there. Okay, okay. And a junkyard right there. And uh, the levee was a junkyard at one time. That's where they put all the cars and stuff and used cars and 
stuff they're trying to get rid of and smash them up and it was uh interesting yes. well didn't you take a trolley? how would you get over to lafayette you could take the trolley couldn't you yep okay so there was yep. that bridge that you could the brown yep. street bridge, yep. probably no 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 main huh. street bridge oh okay okay the original main street bridge okay interesting but we most of the time we walked yeah that's interesting that's and there were two theaters there were two theaters, the Mars and the Lafayette. Yeah. What sort of social activities did they have on campus when you were a student? I don't know. I was too busy practicing football and basketball. <laughs> okay. But no, they, they had they, they, must they have had a lot. The they had a lot of dances and things that done weekends at the fraternity house and things like that. And, sure. And uh, and they they you know Harry's chocolate shop was always there. So there I, are some milestones. And, and uh, <laughs> that's 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 something. Yeah, you've been pretty much in, uh, involved in the community. Some of the things you're still we've been with the Bone of Zoning Appeals. Tell us a little about some of your activities in the. I local was with community. the Area Plan Commission and the and the Board of Zoning Appeals, and I just I just enjoyed you know working with people and, and learning about it. And, sure. Uh, I was appointed by the mayor to do it, and uh, and I had time to do it, so. I, I, I enjoyed it. It was very. It was uh, a learning process and uh, very enjoyable. And and again, you're just you're just trying to pick a starting lineup when you get down to it. Exactly. And uh, are you still involved with any of the no, communities uh -uh, anymore? No. Okay. I was with you. I was with United Way. I was on so many boards. I mean, I was going to board meetings all the time and. Uh, but I enjoyed it. Sure. I really did. And it gave you it gave you involvement and it's engagement. Yes. It gave yes. you involvement in the community. Yes. Which Met a lot of nice people. Met right. a lot of nice people. Right. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of your honors and awards. You were the coach of the week when and uh, when you went over Stanford in 1970 and over Iowa. Tell us about some of the other and that that one is a nice one. That La Rosa Sports Hall of Fame. You got that one from honors athletes from Cincinnati into the Northern Kentucky area. Yeah. Yes, okay. that was that was a surprise. Tell us how did how did they contact you? I just I just got a let I got a phone call, and uh, and and they uh, told me about this and I, it was something that uh, they started down there. I didn't know anything about it, and uh, it was it was very very nice a very nice honor because I went in with a lot of guys that I had competed against and uh, knew about and respected. And it was it was a, a lot, it was a lot of fun. Sure, it was kind of a little remembrance. What about some of the players that were on the team when you played? You still keep in touch? Oh yes. Yeah. And yeah. you were there was a uh, reunion. You have reunions of your team. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. Whenever we get a chance, we do. Yes. Uh -huh. we're, we're getting we're getting fewer in numbers now. <laughs> well, that's okay. You still keep in touch. Do you um, participate in the alumni at all? In the, in the as a Purdue grad? Not as much as I used to. And what sort of involvement did you? Well, oh, I used to spend all my whole summers going to golf outings. But you still for play alumni golf alumni clubs, and I'd go to all the alumni clubs. When you were the uh, assistant coach or head coach, you were involved very much with the with the alumni clubs. Right. We and we we called that the traveling circuit with Joe Rudolph. So we spent a lot of time <laughs> on 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 the circuit, so to speak. <laughs> okay. And you still play golf, though. Yes. Yeah, you still yes. keep up. Yes. Uh, not could, until tomorrow. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, talk. About, Purdue has a lot of traditions, like the Boilermaker Special. Do you have a favorite tradition of Purdue that you'd like to share with us? No, not 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 uh, just that the the student body to me uh, at athletic events they're great. They've always been great, and I think I think they they do a marvelous job. Of, of staying together and backing their team. All right. And remember, uh, remember Block P. That was yes, very, that was very P, effective. Yes, that was here when yes. I came. And uh, and it was you know that's what that's what sticks out in my mind. Right. And your contact with it, the, with the and now they all come in black. You know they all wear black. They have the black out and all that stuff. And <laughs> and I just think it's I think it's wonderful that yeah. they're involved. Yeah. One other one other tradition though that they don't have anymore. Remember there, there used to be the time when they could take down the goalposts. There's some pictures of when they sort well, of yeah, goalposts are expensive, but oh, we I got know. some people hurt too. Yeah. Those goalposts are heavy. All right, and, and I remember and being at some games where they'd be up there rocking. That's back. right. <laughs> that's right. That's it, it. Would just that's why we you know put the fence around the field so that it would deter some of that. And we were worried about somebody getting hurt. Oh yeah. That's number one. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
Um, tell us a little bit about what your activities have been since you retired from Purdue. Share with us. Well, as soon as I leave here, I'm going home and rake more leaves. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, I mean, you can't do that in the dead I, of winter. I do. I, I have a regular group. I, I go to, I, I get, the alarm goes off at 6 o'clock every morning, and, uh, and I'm in the shower at 7, and I'm the coffee at 8. And, uh, every day. Every day. Okay. I go to, at, 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 at every day during the week, we have a coffee group that meets. And, uh, Do you go to different places? Or? No, we go out the trip. We used to go. We, we've closed about four or five places <laughs> since we started this. Uh, we started off at Ma Brown's down the levee. And, that name and, I don't remember. And, well, that's, that's been a long time ago. She yeah. closed a long time ago. And, but we're now out the Triple X on, the, uh, on 52, the new one on the west side. And, okay. And we have a table where a bunch of guys come and lie to each other. <laughs> it's kind of fun, though. It, it, it is. is. It gets you up. Gets you up. It gets you going. Mm. You know, no sense laying around the house. That's right. Talk about traditions. How about I'm sure years ago they didn't have the breakfast club or the tailgating. Ta what was it like before the? Oh, years I don't. Ago? You know, I still don't know anything about the breakfast club. But That's you know what they dress. Yes, yeah, right. I know that it exists. Right. Yes, and I, I've, I've seen the results of <laughs> some of it. And, uh, Some worm to the games, but too. But the tailgating has, it's, there's always been tailgating. Oh, has there really? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. okay. People always took something like that, that uh, you know, to enjoy themselves. And, and I think uh, where I first noticed it, of course, when you're playing, you know, you drive in, you see all these people waving at the bus, and they're all, yeah, they're holding the Coke up or holding the beer or what else. They're holding up and a sandwich, and you know what I'm saying? You know, and, and you get a big lump in your thigh. Yeah, that's what I ought to be doing. <laughs> but uh, no. why not? Why not me? Right? <laughs> yeah. But and now we get to we go and I get to go and do that now. Just get to go and yeah. And we have friends we go to the games with and. You still go to the games, though. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you have you gone to some of the? Do you still go to the bowls too? Do you try to go to those? Oh, uh, I've been to quite a few of them. Uh huh. Some of them are. Uh, I've been to all of them, but maybe. About two, probably. Oh, Some good. of them are not feasible enough to go to. Right. Exactly. And, okay. Uh, How about uh, one of your longest memories of Purdue? Got any long memories that you'd like to share with us? Well, just the the the, the fact that of all all the people that I've been able to work with, and the uh, good, you know, players that you were around, and people and friends that you make in this community, it's been. And this is our home, sure. and this is this is where our this is our children's home. Right. So, it's uh, that's that's the fondest memory I think is right. uh, it's a great place to live. It's a great place to bring up uh, children, right. and now they're they're all within shouting distance. We have a son in Indianapolis, a son in uh, a son in St. Charles, Illinois, and a daughter in in Evanston. So they're all close to home and. Uh, that makes it and nice. They lock in, and they can get back here for games, which makes it nice. Yeah, that is nice. Do you have a, an outstanding event in your life, the one that comes to mind by any chance? An outstanding event in my mm -hmm. life? I'd have to say my bride was my outstanding event in my life. Sounds good. Okay. Um, and in closing, any questions that uh, you'd like to ask that weren't asked or any closing comments that you'd like to share with the researchers? I don't think I have that. that <laughs> I think we've covered about all the bases. Okay. And Anything I think we're at home plate. We're at home plate. <laughs> we've, we've gone all the way around. Okay. This concludes, and I want to thank you very much, Mr. DeMoss, for this and sharing it. I know that our researchers will enjoy it, and I thank you. Kathleen, it's my pleasure, pleasure. And, and I enjoyed meeting you. Thank you. <laughs>